Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Charles Delastic. I'm the Managing Director of Blue Bond Tax Planning. We've been inheritance tax specialists for more than 18 years and have helped hundreds of clients save millions of pounds on their inheritance tax. So today's video is around life insurance and exploring whether life insurance is an effective and or expensive way of dealing with your inheritance tax planning. Hi and welcome back. So today's video is around, is life insurance an expensive means of avoiding inheritance tax? Now, most inexperienced advisors would say to you, okay, it's really simple. You just take a life insurance, it pays the inheritance tax off and that's it. When you die, problem solved, right? But that particular type of life insurance is standard whole of life and it can have quite a big impact upon your monthly cash flows. So really there are three types of insurance that are utilized in this particular mechanism. There's term assurance, and there is two types of whole of life insurance. One is standard whole of life, and one is maximum whole of life. So if you want to know the differences between maximum whole of life and standard whole of life, I've got an extensive video on that talking about two life insurance plans. Okay, so first of all, term assurance. Now, term assurance is useful if a client says, okay, I'm definitely going to downsize and give the money away, or I'm definitely going to give money into trust or whatever, and they absolutely know what they're going to do. And from those gifts during lifetime, they bring their estate down to below um, their allowances for inheritance tax, which for a married couple is about a million. So if they know they're going to do that, then yeah, a term assurance for maybe seven years or whatever, and there is a specific type, which is called gift into vivos trust planning, uh, insurance planning, sorry, which meets that particular need. Okay, uh, but most of the time people go with whole of life insurance because with even with maximum whole of life, which is used for a similar purpose, and it's used to say that, okay, if I keep some assets for a long period of time while I'm slowly and effectively giving them away for inheritance tax purposes, either into trust or directly, I need some term assurance to cover that, uh, some whole of life insurance to cover that time period. So a maximum whole of life policy suits that. And for a 60 year old, if they took 800,000 pounds worth of cover, it's about one tenth of the cost of the standard whole of life plans. So the standard whole of life plans are there to, as far as we're concerned anyway, to cover the main residence plus chattels, chattels are furniture, jewelry, cars, etc., which people keep until they die. And obviously everybody needs to keep around 50,000 pounds or so in cash for an emergency fund. So providing we can set up a client where their income meets their expenditure, and obviously that's a financial planning exercise, then a standard of whole of life to cover the house plus about a hundred thousand pounds usually done it but those costs of those policies as i say around at 60 is around about 10 times as much as a balanced plan so by utilizing both types of plans you effectively can save significant amount of money where the main cost comes in for standard whole of life is if you've got uh, health issues because other if you haven't got health issues and you're perfectly healthy for your age then you would get a standard cover. And really, let's say over the term of your life, you paid half a million pounds into that policy, probably the policy would nearly always pay out to double what you paid in. But if you've got bad health, then that figure may not be quite the same or worst case, you couldn't even get the insurance at all. So there's different types of life insurance. If you've got health problems, then yes, it can be an expensive methodology. Other than that, for most people, a standard whole of life, especially if their main residence plus around 100,000 is going to grow well over a million pounds for a married couple, is a very useful mechanism to avoid paying inheritance tax. So that's, is life insurance expensive? Uh, but 
make sure you watch the main video that I've got on the two different types of life insurance and that will answer a lot more questions on that. So that you'll find on the channel and you'll find a link in the um, uh, below as well in the answer to this question. Okay, thanks for listening. If you found that video useful, please give us a thumbs up and a like. It does help the channel and goodbye for now. Bye.